End of Cycle Assessment Item 1 In Kup Jorwa, a maize plantation was affected by three challenges. Caterpillars feeding on leaves, strong hailstorms that broke the tassels, and a long, cold period that slowed plant development. Many maize plants became short, had pale leaves, and produced few cobs. When the weather improved and temperatures rose, new shoots appeared, some tassels formed, and maize grains developed, though the yield was below average. Task A. Explain how each of the challenges experienced affected the maize plants. B. Explain how the maize plants managed to form new shoots and yield grains after the bad weather ended. How the challenges affected the maize plants. Caterpillars feeding on leaves. Caterpillars ate the maize leaves, reducing leaf area for photosynthesis. Less photosynthesis meant less food, glucose, produce causing poor growth, pale leaves, and weak plants. Strong hailstorms. Hail broke tassels and damaged stems, reducing pollen production and fertilization, which led to fewer cobs and lower yield. Long cold period. Low temperatures slowed metabolic reactions, reducing growth rate and development. Plants became short, pale, and stunted, and flowering was delayed. How the maize plants formed new shoots and yielded grains after conditions improved. Improved temperature and weather. Warmer temperatures increased enzyme activity, promoting faster growth and development. With better weather, maize plants developed new tassels and silks, allowing pollination and fertilization to occur. New leaf and shoot growth. Surviving plants produced new shoots and leaves, restoring photosynthesis and energy production. Grain development. Photosynthesis in the new leaves supplied sugars and nutrients to developing grains, enabling some cobs to form, although the yield was below average due to earlier damage. Item 2. A 55-year-old primary teacher, M. Mabara, has been experiencing weak bones, tooth loss, and difficulty walking upstairs. She also noticed her vision is poor when reading small print at night. One evening, during marking, her son accidentally dropped a hot cup of tea on her hand, and she quickly withdrew it without thinking. Task A. 1. Explain the biological process involved in her quick withdrawal of the hand. Part 2. Describe why she experiences bone weakness and poor vision at night. B. Advise the teacher on how to manage these challenges and remain healthy in her later years. The biological process involved in the quick withdrawal of the hand. Detection of stimulus. Sensory receptors in the skin detect the heat from the tea. Transmission of impulse. Sensory neurons carry the message to the spinal cord and brain. Processing and reflex action. The spinal cord immediately triggers a reflex arc to protect the hand, allowing rapid withdrawal even before the brain consciously processes the pain. Motor response. Motor neurons send impulses to the muscles in the arm and hand, causing them to contract quickly and pull the hand away. Reasons for bone weakness and poor vision at night. Bone weakness and tooth loss, likely due to calcium and vitamin D deficiency, which reduces bone mineral density. This leads to fragile bones, difficulty walking upstairs, and weak teeth. Poor vision at night, Night blindness, often caused by vitamin A deficiency, which affects the retina's ability to detect dim light, making it hard to see in low light conditions. Advice for managing these challenges and remaining healthy. Balanced diet, calcium rich foods for strong bones and teeth, foods with vitamin D, sunlight exposure, fish and eggs to help calcium absorption. Consume vitamin A rich foods like carrots, sweet potatoes and spinach to improve night vision. Regular exercise, 
engage in weight-bearing exercises like walking, light jogging, to strengthen bones and maintain mobility. Protective habits. Be cautious with hot objects and sharp tools to avoid injuries, especially with weaker bones. Medical checkups. Have regular eye tests, bone density scans, and dental checkups to detect problems early. Adequate rest and hydration. Maintain good sleep and drink plenty of water to support overall body health. Item 3. Residents of a trading center in Bushenyi collect their garbage and dump it into a nearby open pit. Over time, the pit filled up, and flies and rats became common in the area. A heavy downpour later washed the waste into a small stream where farmers fetch water for irrigation. The farmers noticed the vegetables along the stream grew taller and greener than those far away, but the water had a bad smell and mosquitoes multiplied in the area. Task Part A. Explain the biological processes that cause the vegetables near the stream to grow better. Part B. Explain how the community can manage waste disposal to protect their environment and health. Biological processes that caused vegetables near the stream to grow better. Runoff carried nutrients from the garbage. Decomposing waste in the pit released nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, which are essential plant nutrients. Nutrient enrichment of the soil. When the runoff reached the stream and irrigated nearby fields, these nutrients were absorbed by the soil, making it fertile. Enhanced plant growth. The enriched soil allowed plants to carry out more photosynthesis, producing more sugars and energy, resulting in taller, greener vegetables. How the community can manage waste to protect the environment and health. Proper waste disposal. Use covered bins and designated dumping sites to prevent flies and rats. Composting organic waste. Convert vegetable and food waste into compost to enrich soil safely without contaminating water. Avoid dumping into water bodies. Stop throwing waste into streams to prevent water pollution, bad smells, and mosquito breeding. Regular cleaning and sanitation. Maintain a clean environment, clear drains, and prevent stagnant water to reduce disease vectors like mosquitoes. Community awareness. Educate residents on the health risks of improper waste disposal and encourage recycling, composting, and safe dumping. Item four. Fred is a farmer growing maize on the slopes of a mountain. The mountain had thick vegetation cover on the mountain top before a volcanic eruption occurred. After some time, Fred observed that whenever it rains, there's a large volume of water that flows rapidly from the mountain top down the slopes. There are frequent landslides, crop yield along the slopes has reduced, and many animals that used to live on the mountain top have descended the slopes and are destroying people's crops. Also, people no longer get the medicinal plants from the mountain top and are suffering from most of the diseases they would have treated before. Task. Part A. Explain the environmental challenges observed by Fred. Part B. Explain why it is important to restore that environment to its original state. Environmental challenges observed by Fred. Rapid water flow during rains. The volcanic eruption removed vegetation on the mountain top. Without plants to absorb water, rainfall flows quickly down the slopes, increasing soil erosion. Loss of vegetation and unstable volcanic soil make slopes weak, causing landslides that destroy crops and soil. Reduced crop yield. Soil erosion washes away topsoil, reducing nutrients available for maize, leading to poor growth and low yield. Animals descending the slopes. Animals that lost their natural habitat move down to farm areas, feeding on crops and becoming pests to farmers. Loss of medicinal plants. Plants on the mountaintop were destroyed, so people cannot collect herbs they use to treat diseases, affecting community health. Importance of restoring the environment. Prevent soil erosion and landslides. Restoring vegetation stabilizes soil, reduces rapid water flow, and protects crops and settlements. Improve soil fertility. Plants and trees add organic matter and retain nutrients, enhancing crop yield. Restore animal habitats. Replanting vegetation allows animals to return to their natural habitat, reducing crop damage. Replenish medicinal plants. Restoration allows the growth of useful herbs, supporting community health and traditional medicine. Maintain ecosystem balance. 
Vegetation supports biodiversity, water regulation, and climate stability, ensuring a healthy and sustainable environment. Item 5. Mercy, a 30-year-old hairdresser in Gulu, spends most of her day seated at work and sleeps immediately after eating. She loves fried foods, sugary snacks, and smokes occasionally with her friends. Recently, she started experiencing chest pain, coughing with mucus, and shortness of breath. She also feels dizzy and weak, and her doctor told her she has excessive fat around her heart and lungs filled with tar deposits. Part A. Explain the biological causes and effects of Mercy's health problems. Part B. Suggest lifestyle changes that can help Mercy recover and maintain good health. Biological causes and effects of Mercy's health problems. Lack of physical activity. Since Mercy spends most of her day seated, little energy is used. This causes unused food, especially fats and sugars, to be stored as body fat, leading to obesity and fat buildup around the heart. Eating habits. Frequent eating of fried foods and sugary snacks increases cholesterol and fat levels in the blood. This may cause narrowing of blood vessels, reducing blood flow to the heart and causing chest pain, angina. Sleeping immediately after eating. This prevents proper digestion, leading to poor metabolism and further fat accumulation in body tissues. Smoking. Cigarette smoke contains tar and carbon monoxide. Tar collects in the lungs, reducing the surface area for gas exchange, leading to shortness of breath and coughing with mucus. Carbon monoxide combines with hemoglobin, reducing oxygen transport, which makes Mercy feel weak and dizzy. Fat around the heart. Excess fat around the heart makes it harder for the heart to pump blood efficiently, leading to reduced oxygen supply to body tissues and fatigue. Lifestyle changes to help Mercy recover and maintain good health. Exercise regularly. Engage in daily physical activities like walking, jogging, or cycling to burn excess fat and improve blood circulation. Eat a balanced diet. Reduce fried and sugary foods. Eat more fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins. Avoid smoking. Stop smoking to prevent further lung damage and allow the lungs to clear tar deposits. Avoid sleeping immediately after eating. Allow at least two to three hours after meals before sleeping to improve digestion and metabolism. Regular medical checkups. Help to monitor heart and lung health and detect any problems early. Item 6. Asha, a six-year-old girl in Mumbai, had diarrhea, vomiting, and a mild fever for several weeks. Her mother reports that Asha has not been eating well, and her diet mainly consists of starchy foods with little protein or fruits. Asha also bruises easily, and her bones appear weak. The doctor noted low hemoglobin and poor immunity. Part A. Explain how Asha's sickness and diet have affected her body's normal functions, including digestion, immunity, and tissue repair. Part B. Advise on the type of diet and care that could restore her health and prevent similar illnesses in the future. How Asha's sickness and diet have affected her body's normal functions. Poor diet and low protein intake. Asha mainly eats starchy foods with little protein. Proteins are needed for growth, tissue repair, and making enzymes and antibodies. Lack of protein causes slow healing of wounds, weak muscles, and poor immunity. Lack of vitamins and minerals. Few fruits in her diet means she lacks vitamin C and iron. Lack of vitamin C weakens blood vessels, causing easy bruising and poor wound healing, Lack of iron lowers hemoglobin levels, reducing oxygen transport and causing weakness and dizziness. Weak bones. Asha's bones appear weak, likely due to a lack of calcium and vitamin D, which are needed for bone formation and strength. Effect of diarrhea and vomiting. These cause loss of water and mineral salts, leading to dehydration and fatigue. They also reduce feed absorption, worsening malnutrition. Low immunity. Because of protein and vitamin deficiency, her body produces fewer antibodies, making her more prone to infections. 
Diet and care to restore Asha's health and prevent future illness. Balanced diet. Meals that contain proteins, vitamins, fresh fruits and vegetables, minerals like milk, green leafy vegetables, and energy foods like maize, rice, cassava. Iron-rich foods. Provide liver, beans, and green vegetables to increase hemoglobin levels. Vitamin C-rich foods. Include oranges, mangoes, guavas, and tomatoes to improve immunity and healing. Calcium and vitamin D. Milk, small fish, and sunlight exposure to strengthen bones and teeth. Plenty of clean water and rehydration. Oral rehydration solution or clean water mixed with salt and sugar to replace lost water and salt from diarrhea and vomiting. Good hygiene and medical care. Clean food, safe water, and regular medical checkups to prevent infections and maintain good health.